Hi, today we're going to decoupage a jar with some flowers on it. I got this jar at the dollar store, but you can use any jar, mason jar, pickle jar, whatever you like. We're going to base coat the jar with a white multi-purpose surface paint. I'm using a sponge and it will add a little bit of texture. Right now you can see a lot of bubbles in it, but in a minute I'll show you how to tap those bubbles down, so just keep on painting. Make sure you cover everything. I did at least three coats on the jar and the lid to get it to cover completely so it would be a nice bright white. On the jar, I don't paint the bottom at this time, but I do go all the way to the edges of the bottom. So when the jar is sitting on the table, you can't see any of it. You can see all the bubbles from the sponge on the jar right now. We're gonna let it set for just a minute. I tap off the sponge onto a towel and then I'll tap out those bubbles. You see how they're already smoothing down? Just tap the sponge onto the towel, get it dry, and it smooths those bubbles out. I'm going to use a brush to get paint up under the lid. Then we'll tap that out with a sponge so that it has the exact same t texture as the rest of the jar. Now I'm going to put the lid on and see exactly where the lid stops and the jar starts. And we're going to use the paintbrush to fill in the gaps here. If your jar doesn't have that type of a lid, you can also use painter's tape to make an edge so that you don't go way up high onto where the lid screws on. All right, the first coat has dried didn't take very long and I'm going to apply coat number two. You can see the bubbles, they're forming again, but they're not as bad because it's paint sticking to paint instead of paint trying to adhere to the jar. I do use a smaller sponge to get up under that lid. It's just a little bit easier for me. While the jar is drying completely, I'm going to start cutting out my napkin. You can use any flower or any design that you like. I'm using white paint on my jar because the background of my flowers are white paint. So if your backgrounds are yellow or light pink, try to match the background that's on your napkin. I don't cut perfectly up to the edges, except right here where I wanna remove the stem. I'm not going to use the stem on this flower. So I'm just gonna cut around the leaves there's a little bit of the napkin showing, but that will disappear when we decoupage it onto the jar because of my white background. We're going to need three of the large flowers and three of the small flowers, but don't cut out the three large flowers just yet. I'm only cutting out one. We're going to cut the other other two out a little bit differently because they're going on the bottom of the jar. They have three layers, so go ahead and remove those layers. There's my three small flowers, my one large flower, and all of the backs are peeled off. I put a little bit of decoupage on my fingers and pinch the edges and then they separate a lot easier. Making sure my big flower is going to fit. And now we're going to cut the other two large sunflowers and fit them on the bottom of the jar. I just happen to have this circle magnet it fit perfectly so I'm going to draw my circle and I'm going to cut two of these circle center of the sunflowers out. My dog's growling in the background. 
Okay, separate the different layers here and get your Mod Podge out. I use this mop brush. I absolutely loved it. I have used it over and over and over and sometimes don't even get it washed right away, but it still comes back to life every time I do and it's perfect for laying down Mod Podge. Now I put this sunflower on upside down so we can see it through the bottom of the jar. Isn't that nifty? Cling wrap is very useful. You can use plastic baggies also and you just Lay it on top of the sunflower, nice and smooth, and then you press down the flower and out the wrinkles. You start in the center and then press out, and it lays that sunflower down just beautifully. I'm putting on a second coat of Mod Podge. And I'm going to press it out one more time. Now this is a little bit of a different process here because it is upside down but you'll see how it's gonna work really cool in the end. All right, the decoupage has dried and now I'm getting my sponge and the white paint and I'm completely covering the bottom of that sunflower. I dried off the sponge and I'm tapping out the bubbles. There, now look bright, beautiful sunflower in the bottom of the jar. Huh? I think that's really nifty. I'm doing some touch up, making sure my jar is completely ready for the decoupage process. It really takes a lot to cover these jars. The areas that aren't covered show through a little bit dark. And I like for this to be a beautiful stark white. We are going to paint yellow along the rim, so this doesn't have to be perfect, but I do want a nice even coat. Now these jars have a little gap at the rolled up part of the lid, and I like to fill those with paint. It just makes them look more complete, and I figure if you ever hand wash these, that the water won't seep down inside and cause issues later. So I will use a brush and kind of load it heavily with paint and slip that paint down into fill those gaps. Not all jars have this gap, but when they do, it's nice to fill them in. Okay, so we've applied one round flower. I have three small flowers and one more large flower to decoupage on. Got the yellow paint. This is cadmium yellow. The supplies, they are listed down in the description when you hit the arrow button. To make my line straight, I'm adding painter's tape. You can use any low tack tape, but make sure your paint is very dry before you do this. I use a sponge and I'm tapping on that bright yellow paint. And I'm just going across the edge, but not all across the bottom again. Okay, as that's drying, I'm going to paint the edge of the lid and with this smaller sponge as I'm tapping around it had a perfect edge on the top and I didn't have to do any touching up of the paint at all. The paint is dry and I'm peeling off the tape. I always have to do a little bit of touch up on the yellow line or any color line that I put on after I use the tape. I think it's just because of the texture of the paint and some of it seeps underneath. I'm painting the ridge right underneath the top of the jar where that other little rim is poking out. I'm not going to paint the rim because I like the separation of the yellow between that and the lid. Oh, we're going to put the second sunflower on the jar and it's going to be right side up this time. So get out that Mod Podge again, put a layer on, lay your flower down, press it in from the center and then towards the edges. Get that cellophane out and smooth it down. It doesn't take very much. These napkins are very easy to work with. Sorry, had to clean my nails. I get paint and Mod Podge underneath them. 
There's the inside and there's the bottom of the jar. Now we'll go ahead and start putting our sunflowers on. I'm putting where the sun is shining and the middle of the flower is lighter towards the top. So it looks like the sun is shining down on the jar. Tiny bit of white paint because underneath the rim of the jar, I did get yellow paint on it. And so I'm just going to touch that up one more time. And then we'll be done with the touching up of all the paint and we can focus on decoupage. Okay, here we go. I've got this bag and it's full of rice. A couple little girls made it for me and I just lay the jar on that and it keeps it very steady, doesn't roll around. It's been very useful. I use it for rock paintings when the rocks are wobbly too. Okay, now I'm going to hold the sunflower on the jar where I want it and put the Mod Podge down under one side of the sunflower and then start at the center and then push it down all the way to the edges. Make sure that all of the little extra edges have Mod Podge underneath them. This one leaf is gonna actually go a little bit under the bottom of the jar. Pick up the other side, put Mod Podge underneath here, and again, we'll lay it down. As you can see, it takes a lot longer to prepare the jar than it does to do the Mod Podge itself. I'm going to put the cellophane on top and I find the first time that you do this it's best not to have any Mod Podge on top of the napkin. I have a tendency to tear them if the Mod Podge is on top. You're going to see my struggles when we put the second coat of Mod Podge on and I'll give you a tip on how not to have those problems. Now the bottom is dry already but I'm just making sure and adding the cellophane to it. Okay let's put on the second layer. So kind of measuring out where I'm going to put them. They're going to be one a little lower, one a little higher, just to give it some extra interest. Holding my sunflower in place, putting the decoupage on, and then laying it down. Start in the center, press it down. Get that cellophane. Lay it on top and smooth it out. I did have a couple creases that happened just because of the curve of the jar, but you can't see them. And the cellophane makes them so smooth. Okay, I'm putting where the sunflower is light, where it looks like the sun is hitting it from the top, and that's what's going towards the top of the jar. Laying down half of the sunflower. And then the other half. It's pretty slick and cellophane to make sure that it's smooth. Oh, there's a little tiny white spot on that napkin right there. So I'm just touching it up with yellow paint. have to do the cellophane. There we go. Gently take that cellophane off and those are all set. Now I already put the dots on here, didn't videotape it and I'm so sorry, but let me walk you through how I did it. It's very simple. I didn't put very many dots just a few here and there, and they're a little bit larger. Use the same yellow paint as the, on, the, on the edges of the jar and a dotting tool. You can use the back of a paintbrush or a pen or anything that has a nice round smooth edge. And every time I make a dot, I re-dip 
the dotting tool so that they will all be the same size. And I just randomly placed the dots on the jar until I was satisfied with the results. I didn't put any on the top of the jar or on the bottom of the jar. Here's another jar that I made. I used green to accent this one. It's a smaller jar, but it still worked out really well. Got this one at the Dollar Tree in Texas also. Okay, it's time for us to get the jar sealed. Going to get the Mod Podge and put a final coat and cover the jar and the lid 100%. Don't put it on too thick. And this is where you can see I had a little bit of a struggle. As I put the Mod Podge on, my napkin started to bubble a little bit. I've used these napkins before and I didn't have that issue. Maybe it's because of the humidity. It's really, really high right now here. But you can put a thinner layer on than I did because you can put a varnish on top of this and then everything's gonna be easier to work with. And the tacky feeling that Mod Podge gives you won't show anymore. Okay, I'm gonna put the Mod Podge here on the jar. You can see I have a lot of Mod Podge on my paintbrush, and I think if I would have put it on a little bit thinner, I might not have had so much trouble with the napkin bubbling. So far, so good. Covering the rest of the jar. And if you look closely, you can see the reflection of where this napkin is starting to kind of bubble up. I'm looking at that and I'm going, Oh no, but it works out. I'm going to show you how. Every napkin is different. Some of them are very fragile. Some of them are a little bit easier to work with. Now because of those bubbles, I'm getting out the cellophane and I'm going to press these down again. Now, I didn't wait for the Mod Podge to dry. And so when I'm picking it up, I'm having to be very careful. What I should have done is waited until the Mod Podge was dry to the touch and then laid the cellophane down. So don't do it the way I did it. Be a little patient, let it dry to the touch. And then when you put the cellophane down, you don't have the risk of pulling the napkin up. One of the leaves on my jar did pull up and it's not in the video and I should have left it. And so I wiped away all of the torn napkin. I got another sunflower and I cut that piece out again and I mud podged it on top of the napkin that tore and no one can tell. See, I'm having trouble here because now this napkin is very fragile. I wasn't patient. Now that one did lift off very nicely. And I'm gonna turn the jar. This sunflower wasn't too bad. So I'm just rubbing down a couple of the spots that were kind of lifting. And even then you see that leaf trying to lift off. Oh my goodness.
That's just a line on the jar. It's a highlight. So I'm smoothing this one down. I have a little Mod Podge on my finger. But this is going to be the fix. I put the Dura Clear Satin Varnish on after all of that Mod Podge has dried. And I completely cover everything with it. The napkin doesn't lift off this time. And I make sure I go to all of the edges. I'm just pouring it straight onto the jar. And you could put two or three coats of this on to give it a very super protective finish. And the shine is just satiny and it turns out really pretty with the texture of the jar. Here's the two jars that I made. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe and like and I'll see you soon.